The Overstory is a novel by Richard Powers published in 2018. The book is about nine Americans whose unique life experiences with trees bring them together to address the destruction of forests. It won the 2019 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. The Overstory introduces each of its nine main characters with their own section. The first part begins in the mid-1800s, following the Hoyle family as Jorgen Hoyle brings six chestnuts from New York and plants them at his new home in Iowa. One seedling survives and grows massive, even as a blight wipes out most of the country's other chestnuts. Jorgen's son buys a camera and begins taking a photo of the chestnut tree once a month. This ritual lasts for generations, up to the latest Hoyle, an art student named Nicholas. Visiting the family farm for Christmas one year, Nick is stranded on the road by a snowstorm. When he returns the next morning, he finds his family dead, killed by a gas leak. The story changes to China, as Ma Si Xuan prepares to attend engineering school in America. His father presents him three jade rings shaped like trees and an antique scroll depicting Buddhist adepts. Si Xuan travels to America, changes his name to Winston, and marries. In Illinois, where they make their home, he and his wife Charlotte decide to plant a mulberry tree. Mimi, Carmen, and Amelia are their daughters. Mimi is enrolled in college and majors in engineering. When Winston contacts her one day and sounds somber, she becomes concerned. A few months later, Winston takes his life next to the mulberry tree. Charlotte succumbs to dementia, and the Ma daughters split the family heirlooms. Adam Apich grew up with four siblings in the 1960s. His father celebrates the birth of each kid by planting a tree, and Adam's tree is a maple. Adam only gets along with his sister Jean, and he's captivated with insects. Adam's sister Lee disappears when he's 13. Adam begins a company completing homework for his classmates while in high school, but his own grades suffer because of this. He becomes enthralled one day while reading a book on social psychology. When he applies to college, he writes the book's author, a Fortuna College professor. Intellectual property lawyer Ray Brinkman and stenographer Dorothy Kazali date and act in amateur theater. Ray is a good and responsible person, whereas Dorothy is more erratic. After their first night together Ray proposes, and they develop a long history of breaking up and getting back together, until they get married on a whim while traveling in Rome. Every year on their anniversary, they aim to plant something new in their yard. Douglas Pavlicek, when he was a young man, took part in the Stanford Prison Experiment, a psychological research that quickly evolved into violence. After that, he joins the U.S. Air Force and serves in Thailand, until one day his jet gets damaged by a missile. Douglas crashes his jet into a banyan tree, damaging his leg. He's rescued, released, and goes back home to America. Douglas moves to Oregon after working as a ranch hand on a remote horse ranch in Idaho. He is horrified by the sight of the completely clear-cut slopes that are visible beyond the border of the roadway. After that, he gets a job that requires him to plant thousands of Douglas fir seedlings. Neil A. Mater is seven when his Indian immigrant father takes home an early computer kit. Nile becomes fixated on programming the computer as Babel and Nile work together to assemble it. A teacher grabs his computer notepad and he yells at him. Nile climbs a tree out of humiliation and breaks his back, leaving him crippled. Being a prodigy at coding, Nile completes high school in a wheelchair and gets admitted to Stanford two years early, and soon starts coding free computer games. While researching his newest game, he visits Stanford's outdoor terrarium and is amazed by the alien-looking plants. It gives him the vision to design a game that immerses players in another reality. Deaf and plant-obsessed as a youngster, Patricia Westerford grows up. 
she is quite close to her father, Bill, and accompanies him on business trips to Ohio farms, while he teaches her about trees. Bill dies in a car crash when Patricia is 14, and after college, Patricia studies botany and forestry. She learns while conducting research there that trees can communicate with one another by exchanging gases. She produces an essay on this topic that first gains popularity, but is later harshly criticized by a few notable scientists. Patricia loses her job, and almost commits suicide by consuming poisonous mushrooms. She does odd jobs and moves west. While living alone in the woods, other scientists write studies that validate and improve on her findings. When two guys she encounters in the wilderness inform her that her study has been validated, she decides to move in with them and begin working at their research station. Dennis, the station manager, ultimately proposes to her, indicating that they might still live apart as a married couple, to which she agrees. The story then shifts to Olivia Vandergriff, an actuarial science major at college. She's failing her courses and partying a lot after impulsively marrying a fellow student. On her divorce day, she gets high and takes a shower. A faulty socket electrocutes her and stops her heart. Olivia's heart restarts after 70 seconds, and she detects creatures of light attempting to reach her. They soon convince her to drop her education and go west to join campaigners fighting to conserve California's redwoods. She stops at the Hoyle farm, where an old chestnut is withering and Nick is selling paintings. Nick agrees to accompany Olivia, stunned and captivated. They quickly locate the Life Defense Force, an organization devoted to preserving the redwoods. When a pine forest outside Mimi's workplace is felled in the middle of the night, upsetting both of them, it brings Mimi and Douglas together. They attend tree protection protests and are detained and beaten by police. They, too, go to the Life Defense Force. Neelay develops his own firm and becomes rich and successful with his mastery games, continuously developing deeper and more intricate worlds. Patricia is the author of The Secret Forest, a best-selling book on how trees communicate. Adam has made the decision to focus his dissertation on the psychological characteristics of persons who are involved in environmental activism, so he starts conducting interviews. In their frustration over their unsuccessful attempts to have a child, Dorothy and Ray turn to reading and other pastimes and Dorothy has an affair. To stop the logging of the redwood known as Mimas, Nick and Olivia offer to alternate shifts crouching amid its branches. Their vigil endures for months, and they acclimatize to a new sense of time living alone in the tree. Patricia is an expert witness in a logging rights suit and temporarily stops fresh land cutting. Dorothy wants a divorce from Ray, but he experiences a brain aneurysm and almost dies. As a result of her most recent arrest, Mimi loses her employment. Adam interviews Nick and Olivia after a year in the tree. During his presence, a helicopter threatens them, and they ultimately concede defeat and retreat. My mass is cut down and the three are detained. After Adam joins the LDF, the organization protests logging in Oregon. Mimi, Douglas, Olivia, Nick, and Adam plan to burn down logging equipment when their last occupation is thwarted and members are wounded. The gang resolves to carry out one more arson attack in Idaho, but Olivia is fatally injured when an explosion occurs earlier than expected. When she dies, the others burn her corpse and depart. After Olivia's death, the gang members split up, some changing identities and others hiding. Adam goes to graduate school and becomes a professor. Nick leads a nomadic existence while continuing to create political art and yearning for a communication from Olivia. Mimi adopts a new identity and establishes herself as a therapist in San Francisco. She specializes in a kind of treatment that includes maintaining eye contact with the patient. In Montana, 
Douglas works as a caretaker for a deserted village. Dorothy cares for Ray, who can't talk or move following his aneurysm. They learn to recognize trees and get fascinated by the plants in their backyard. Patricia launches a vault to conserve seeds of endangered trees and travels the globe gathering money and collecting specimens. Neele is tired of playing his mastery games and decides to create something new. A game about discovering how to protect the natural environment as it is on Earth. At Douglas' workplace, a visitor discovers his diary and accuses him of setting fires. Douglas chooses to implicate Adam in the crime in order to prevent Mimi from being arrested. Neelay leaves his firm and starts working on a new game, first building artificial intelligences that are as knowledgeable as possible about the biomes on Earth. Patricia is asked to speak in front of a distinguished audience. She talks about what individuals can really do to rescue the planet in her address. She is about to commit herself in front of the public to show how mankind can rescue the Earth, but Neele, who is in the audience, stops her. Adam accepts responsibility for his misdeeds and receives a 140-year jail term. Ray and Dorothy make the decision to let their suburban yard go wild, therefore slowing down their life to watch all of their trees flourish and restraining themselves from giving in to demands from the outside world to mow everything down. Under a pine tree in a municipal park, Mimi recognizes what both Douglas and Adam have done for her and experiences a kind of enlightenment, and is now able to hear the voices of the trees around her. While this is happening, Nick continues to create art, culminating in a massive sculpture that spells out the word still and is designed to be visible from space. If you have any suggestions of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.